Praise the Lord. Beloved, I hope that you are well and keeping safe. So today we are continuing the studies of the book of Samuel. And we are studying 1 Samuel chapters 21 and 22. Beloved, in the previous study, we learned from 1 Samuel chapter 20 that King Saul's plan of wanting to kill David could not succeed because his own son, Jonathan, helped David to escape. But before David escaped, he and Jonathan renewed the covenant of their friendship and promised to love each other. And both of them swore an oath to remain loyal and to show kindness to their children in future. And today's study, 1 Samuel chapter 21, says that after David escaped from Saul, he went to the priest Ahimelech, who was in the temple of God. David asked the priest Ahimelech to give him bread. But there was no ordinary bread, only bread for the priest. But because David said to Ahimelech that he and his men had not been with women, Ahimelech gave David the holy bread. And because David was on the run for his life, he didn't have any time to take weapons. And so he asked the priest Ahimelech to give him a sword. And the priest told him that the only sword in the temple or the tabernacle was the sword of Goliath, whom David killed. So David took the holy bread and the sword of Goliath and left. But while David was with the priest Ahimelech, there was a man from the country of Edom called Diog. He was King Saul's servant. He saw David receiving the bread and sword from the priest. So after David took the bread and sword, verse 10 says that that very day, David fled from Israel and he went to seek refuge from the king of Gath called Arches. Gath was the land that the giant Goliath, whom David killed, came from. So the servants of the king of God said to him, Isn't this David, the king of his land, whom the women sang about, that David has killed his tens of thousands, but Saul only thousands? And verse 12 says that when David heard what they said, he became very afraid of the king of God. And so he pretended to be insane in their presence and acted like a mad man, making marks on the doors of the gates and letting saliva run down his beard. So the king of God let David go because he thought that David was mad. And First Samuel chapter 22 says that David left God and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. The Bible says that when his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they ran down to David there in the cave of Adullam. And all those who were in distress, in death, unhappy and frustrated in life came to David and he became their commander. The Bible says that there were about 400 men. Then David sent his mother and father to seek refuge with the king of Moab because King Saul wanted to kill them. And he and his 400 men went on the run far away from King Saul. But verse 6 says that King Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered. And King Saul's servant, Deob, the Edomite, who was in the temple the day David went to the high priest to get the holy bread and the sword, said to King Saul that he was there when David came to receive the holy bread and the sword of Goliath from the priest Ahimelech. So King Saul sent for the priest Ahimelech 
and all the members of his family and had all of them killed because he said that they had sided with David. So servants were afraid to touch the priests of God. So it was King Saul's servants from the country of Edom, Deok, who killed 85 priests of God that day. The Bible says that he also killed everyone who lived in the city of the priests. But the Bible says that Ahimelech's son Abietha escaped and went to join David. And David said to Abietha that on that day when he saw Diog at the temple, he knew that Diog would tell it to King Saul. And he said to Abietha that it was his fault that his whole family had died. So David said to Abietha, Ahimelech's son, to stay with him and not be afraid because the man who wants to kill him also wants to kill him too. Beloved, there are many lessons to be learned from 1 Samuel chapters 21 and 22. The Bible says it in 1 Samuel chapter 21 verse 1 that when David ran away from Saul, he didn't have food and weapon to protect himself and he didn't go to anyone to seek these things. The Bible says that he went to the temple, the house of God, to look for food to sustain him and to look for the sword to protect him. Both of the things David went looking for in the temple of God, the bread and the sword, are both symbols of the word of God in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus wants us to know that we need God's word even more than our daily meals. Beloved, God made us and so he knows best what our body needs. Physically, we eat bread to give us energy and strength to maintain a healthy body. In the same way, when we read the word of God, it matures us and strengthens us spiritually to fight off depression and every evil thing that Satan throws at us. So, beloved, whatever you do, remember to get your daily feeding of God's word. Read your Bible daily. You cannot live when you stop eating food. In the same way, you cannot live without the word of God because it is the very breath of God which gives us life. And in the same way that the bread represents the word of God, so does the sword. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow, as it judges the thoughts and the purposes of their hearts. Beloved, when we read God's word, the word of God acts like a sword to enter into our hearts to cut off every bad attitude like jealousy, envy, pride, and all evil imaginations. So if there is any sin in your life that you cannot get rid of, you need to read the word of God in the Bible and meditate on it. And as you continuously read the word of God, the word, which is like a sword, will cut off the root of every sin in your life and enable you to live the godly life that pleases God. Beloved, the word of God, which is like a sword, will also cut off every root of sickness and disease in your body to make you healthy. The word of God, which is like a sword, 
will also cut off every chain that Satan has put around you. Because it is so sharp, it will destroy all the afflictions and troubles that has kept you in bondage. If you continuously read the word of God and faithfully obey it, God's word, which is a sword, will fight all your spiritual battles for you and give you peace. And the second lesson we learn from David in today's study is to help people who are also going through the same problems we are going through. Even though David needed protection because King Saul was after him to kill him, he himself had to protect other people. First Samuel chapter 22 verse 1 says that after David escaped from Saul, he went to hide in the cave of Adullam. There, his father and brothers and other men who were in distress and frustrated in life came to him. The Bible says that there were about 400 men. Even in the face of death and uncertainty, David cared for others. He took care of his mother and father and his friends who were hurting at the time that he himself was in danger of death. And David is being used by God to show us that even in our afflictions, we can still be of use to God and be a blessing to other people. Because David himself went through so much trouble and rejection, he understood what it meant to be rejected and hated. This is why he could feel compassion for people who were rejected and in trouble. Beloved, I don't know what kind of problem you are facing right now, but whatever it is, that problem did not come to destroy you. Satan meant for that problem to harm you, but God will use it to make you feel for the needs of those who are going through the same problem as you, so that you will have compassion on them and encourage them to know that they are not alone. As you encourage those who are down and broken, and you give them hope, you yourself will be strengthened to endure your own problems. Helping others to overcome their problems, to see positivity instead of negativity, will give you yourself hope to overcome your problems. So in every area of your life that you need help, find someone else who also needs help in that same area and give them any help that you can. If it is intercession that you can make on their behalf, go on and pray for them. If it is your time or your money, your skill or your talents that you can use to reduce their burden, use that skill or talents or your money to help them to show that you care. And while you continue to be generous and kind to people in their time of need, God will also have mercy on you and send people to help you in your time of need. And the last lesson we learn from today's study is that not all the problems we go through are punishments from God. David had been anointed to be the next king of Israel, but he was still serving King Saul. Even though he was able to kill the giant Goliath that King Saul could not kill, he never became arrogant. Even though he had been anointed to be king, he humbly served under King Saul, but King Saul could not hide his jealousy of David. He openly attempted to kill David many times and told all the people around him to kill David. David was in fear of his life and because King Saul sent people throughout the land of Israel 
to look for David and kill him. David was no longer safe in his own country. And so he went to the only place where Saul and his men could not come after him. And that country was the home of Israel's enemies, the Philistines, where Goliath came from. This was the only place that Saul would not go looking for David because he knows that the Philistines would do his job for him by killing David. After all, it was David who killed their champion, Goliath. So even though David was now saved from King Saul, he was in danger in the hands of the Philistines. And 1 Samuel chapter 21 verse 12 says that being afraid for his life, David pretended to be mad and let saliva run down his beard in the presence of the Philistines. The sad thing about this whole situation is that David had not sinned against anyone. He had not wronged anyone in any way. In fact, he was a man deeply loved and respected by God. God loved David so much that he called him the man after my heart. So how could God let his beloved David go through all these challenges and humiliation? Beloved, it was not God who made David go through all these difficulties. It was Satan who was trying to prevent the will of God for David's life from coming to pass. God had promised that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who will come and save us from our sins, will come from the descendants of David. And so Satan was working extra to make sure that David dies so that God's will of saving the whole world through Jesus Christ will not come to pass. But Satan could not succeed in killing David to destroy God's plan. Because David himself said it in Psalm 34 verse 18, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from all. David is saying that it is those people who will be obeying God's word and walking in his ways that will be going through many afflictions and difficult problems in life. But the good news is that God will not just save us from some of the afflictions, but he will save us from all the afflictions that comes our way. This is a promise from God that you can count on. That it doesn't matter the numerous battles or problems that you are fighting in your life, such as marital problems, financial difficulty, persistent symptoms of diseases and sicknesses, or difficult and challenging children. Beloved, it doesn't matter if you are going through all of these afflictions. The Bible says that if you keep believing in God and keep trusting in Him, He will deliver you one by one from all these afflictions. Beloved, like David, Satan has seen the glorious and bright future that God has for you. And so John chapter 10 verse 10 says that Satan wants to steal. He wants to kill and to destroy that bright future. But because you are under the protection of the almighty God and you have surrounded your life to him, no demon in spiritual high places in heaven on earth or under the earth can prevent that glorious future that God has for you from coming to pass. So have faith in God and believe that all the pain, the troubles, and the shame and disgrace are all working together for your good. And very soon, God will bring them to an end. So beloved, this brings us to the end of today's study. 
I trust that you have been blessed by the word of God. Please join me again next time and let's find out if King Saul will finally give up chasing after David. And so, beloved, until we meet again, stay blessed.